Hi folks, and welcome to an OI Labs Patreon exclusive tutorial. Today we're gonna to be talking about pointers, but pointers from the perspective of a reverse engineer. So before we get into our tutorial, if you're seeing this, it's because you're watching this on YouTube and not on Patreon. So it's just a reminder, if you like content like this, if you enjoy what you're seeing, go check out our Patreon. There's tons more content like this. We have over 200 hours of reversing live streams, as well as in-depth tutorials like what you're seeing here. Go check it out if you enjoy this kind of stuff. I think most people probably know what a pointer is, but what we want to do today in the tutorial is we want to kind of dive in and show you guys what this looks like in assembly code, because pointers can get a little tricky if you don't have it dialed in 100% what you're looking at. So start off here, let's just do a quick recap of native data types. So native data types, these are things like char, d word, int, unsigned int, et cetera, et cetera. You guys are all familiar with these. So the way this works is in your code, when you're writing code, you'll create a variable of a native data type. And at compile time, that variable is going to be assigned an address in memory, either on the stack if it's a local or in your data section if it's a global. And that address will then contain whatever data is in that variable. So here we can see if you assign 10 to your variable, the compiler will just assign 10 to the address of that variable. Everything is very straightforward. This is something that probably everyone is pretty familiar with. Now let's talk about pointers. So a pointer is exactly what it sounds like. It is a variable that points to something else. So instead of containing a value, it actually contains an address. And what that address points to depends on what type of pointer it is. So a pointer to a native data type, like we have here, a pointer to a D word, promises you that whatever the address points to is gonna be a D word. Now that address can change depending on what you've assigned to the pointer. So of course the pointer can point to any address that you want. But in the code here, we are telling the compiler that whatever the value is that's pointed to by this address, it's going to be a D word. Now one thing to know about pointers is the actual value is not allocated when you define a pointer. So when you define a pointer like this, it simply allocates the space for the address of the pointer, but it doesn't attach it to any address of the D word variable. Of course, you have to do that separately. So at compile time, all you have is the pointer address and some space at that address to contain an address of the actual variable that will eventually be pointed to. Now you will run into situations where you have double pointers or as many pointers as you need. They're not limited to a single pointer. So here we have an example of a double pointer to a D word. So you can see the first pointer points to an address yet to be filled in, which points to another pointer to an address yet to be filled in, which then points to the address of the D word. Again, because it is a D word pointer, there's a promise to the compiler that that final variable will indeed be a D word, but none of the intermediate pointer variables have been filled in at assignment. That has to be done later on in the code, independent of the definition. So let's talk about that. How do you actually make your pointer point to a variable? So in our example here, we have a variable DW value of type D word. We have assigned 10 to that variable. And at compile time, that variable has been given address 45,100 hex. So here we can see in the memory, you're gonna have 10 assigned to that address, 45,100 hex has 10 in it. Then if you use the ampersand command in your code, that means get the address of the variable, not the variable contents. So this is how you address variables. So if you were to say, give me the address of this variable and assign it to a pointer, well, now your pointer has the address of the variable. So you can see here, we have a D word pointer called PDW value, and it is being assigned the address of DW value. So now your D word pointer is going to point to the address of DW value. And if you were to dereference that, you would get the value 10. All right, let's talk about dereferencing. So dereferencing means to access the contents that your pointer points to. So if you have a D word pointer, it is going to point to the address of a D word. If you dereference it, then you will get the actual D word, right? So in this case, we have a simple example just to illustrate the difference. Here we have the D word pointer PDW value. 
sitting at address 45,000 hex. And we have the variable DW value sitting at address 45,100. If you move some value, we're just using foo here to keep it simple, into the dereferenced PDW value, that will actually move foo into the variable DW value, because of course that is what your pointer was pointing to. And we can show you here on the other half of the screen, if you were to print the pointer, you would get the address of the pointer. And if you were to print the dereferenced pointer, you would get the actual contents at that pointer. And dereferencing in C code, you just put it in asterisk or a star before the variable. So again, very simple concept to access the contents of the pointer you dereference it. And we just extended the example here to show you what that looks like in assembly. In assembly, instead of using a star or an asterisk before the variable, you put the variable or the register in brackets. So when you see brackets around a register, that means you are getting the contents of the address that the register contains. So the register contains an address, and you put the brackets around it, and that means give me the contents that that address contains. So in this case, if you were to move that address into EAX, you would be moving the actual address into EAX. If you were to move the address in brackets into EAX, you would get whatever the contents are in PDW value assigned to EAX. Okay, so here we have a very simple example we've set up in Visual Studio. And just a note, I've turned off all compiler optimizations for this. I've turned off warnings. There's a few warnings that would pop up if you try and do this stuff in C++. And I've turned off our security checks just so that we have some cleaner assembly to look at. So what we have here is we have a pointer to p value, which is a D word pointer. We have a D word variable called value here. And what we do is we take the address of our variable value and we assign it to our pointer. So our pointer is now pointing to our value variable. Then what we do is we dereference our pointer and we assign 10 to the dereference pointer. So this is basically taking all those concepts that we just described and putting them into practice so you can see exactly what's going on. Then what we do is we print the pointer. So we're gonna expect some sort of random address. Again, we don't control where the address of value is, so it's gonna be dynamically assigned. So we expect some sort of random value here. Then we print the dereferenced pointer and so we would expect to see the value there that we just put into it, which is 10. And then we print our variable value. And we would expect to see 10 there as well, because of course the pointer points to this variable. So let's run this first and we'll just show you that's exactly what we get. There we go. So we have the pointer is just some random address. We have the dereference pointer is 10. And of course, because that pointer points to our variable value, value is also 10. So let's take a look at this in IDA and I'll show you what it looks like in assembly. All right, so we have this loaded up in IDA and we're looking at our main here. Now we have two variables. One is the pointer and one is the D word. So we can see here there are two variables shown in IDA. And let's take a look here and see how they are used. So here we have a load effective address of var8 into EAX. So EAX is now going to have the address of var8. And it might be a little complex because there's actually some pointer stuff that's happening here that's unrelated to our example. And that's actually just happening because in assembly, when you want to get the address of a variable on the stack here, and it's going to be changing, EBP is going to be changing. What we want to do is we want to use these dereference here. So these are the, the brackets of the dereference to get the contents of var8. And then we use the load effective address of the contents, thus actually getting the address of var8. Now I didn't want this tutorial to be on assembly itself. I mean, that's something that hopefully you guys are familiar with, but just in case I wanted to recap that and just point out that this, this dereference here doesn't actually have anything to do with our example. So we grab the address of var8 and move it into EAX, and then we move EAX into where var4 is pointing. So this is telling me right now that var4 is going to be the pointer. So let's press N and name it. So this is P value. 
and this is going to be our value. All right, now that p value contains the address of value, we then move the address into ECX, and then we dereference it to get the actual value that it's pointing to, and we move, let's press H to turn this into decimal, we move the value 10 into the address that it is pointing at. So this is exactly the same as what you're seeing here. The first thing we did was we took the address of value and we assigned it to the pointer that we created. Then we dereference the pointer and we assigned 10 as a value to the dereference pointer, thus assigning it also to value, the variable value. So that's all we've done here. The rest of this code is just printing out those values as we saw here. So I won't go into that. So hopefully that illustrates how referencing pointers works in assembly. Again, it's a little bit more complex because we're limited in the assembly commands we can use in order to get addresses of variables on the stack, but it is what it is. That's what you're gonna see. That's a realistic example. So that concludes our tutorial here. If you're seeing this, again, it's because you're watching this on YouTube. Remember to go check out our Patreon if you enjoy this kind of stuff. And until next time, continue exposing the mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious.